Robert here at AES 2010 in San Francisco with Robert Rich, ambient music pioneer, electronic synthesis, analog synthesis, mastering engineer, teacher, guru, and vintner. <laughs> I'm going to have trouble living up to all of that. You, you, you've already lived up to the vintner part. Well, I hope so. Yeah, yeah it's fun. Well, That's a great source of pleasure. Excellent. So tell us what's going on. What, what projects are you working on right now? Well, I just finished uh, a tour this year, about three months around the country, and then a big festival in Portugal, the Boom Festival, in uh, the end of August. And now, since the beginning of September, I've been teaching a course in audio mastering at Cogswell College and working slowly on new music. Sometimes it takes a while. The next album, starting with rhythms off the modular synthesizer, I went out and bought myself a new bass and some guitars, and I'm trying to come up with some dubby bass lines and just having fun. Uh, a lot of mastering for other people. Um, what do you use to master? What, what format and what, well, what, pro what uh, if gear? I, if I want to go out to analog, I'll use a pair of Millennia Origins that have uh, some new old stock telephone tubes. And, uh, you know, that's kind of rare these days that I'll actually do the analog loop. Uh, you know, benchmark DAC and ADC for in the ins and outs. For the most part, though, I'm mastering in Logic um, using plugins by Isotope. Uh, the plugin Ozone is an amazing flexible plugin, which I actually did uh, some presets for Ozone version 4, and I've been doing beta testing for Isotope, and I really like the sound of their algorithms. Um, also, I use a, a suite of French plugins of a company called Flux, and they are beautiful sounding. The Flux plugins are absolutely silky smooth. They, they come really close to some of the things that we look for in good tube analog gear. Uh, and whatever else you need. I mean, sometimes subtle amounts of uh, reverb, you know, uh, the, the plugin Ether is a really nice one. And uh, sometimes the, uh, uh, there's, there's a company that I really like, Audio Damage, and they do a little uh, algorithmic reverb called EOS, yes. which is beautiful, and it's very affordable and extremely powerful. So I'm kind of a fan still of algorithmic reverb, and for my own music, I'm still using outboard reverb, but um, this might be the first year that I actually go inside the box for some reverbs. Um, with Ether and with EOS, they're good enough. Also, uh, Flux has some uh, Earcom plugins. Uh, and there's a, some spatializers and things in there that are really powerful. So, how has the the new forms of digital delivery changed how you master things? So now that everyone's music is going to be M, you know, in MP3 or some other compressed format. Well, as they say, garbage in, garbage out. If you start with good sounding raw material, the compressed version is going to sound better than if you started with bad sounding raw material. And oddly enough, well, the loudness wars, of course, are really going to have to change. And I'm having to educate all of my clients about the problems with trying to compare your master to over loud destroyed masters you know it's like you don't want to wreck something that's sounding good and i'm trying to keep as much dynamic range as i can which interestingly for compressed formats often sounds better when there's more natural dynamics so people think that because they're listening on a compressed format like an mp3 or aac or something like that 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 it's already trashed, so why not just make it slammed and make it loud? Turns out that you'll, you'll make a much better sounding a AAC or MP3 if you start with something with more natural dynamics. And in fact, you usually have to leave a little more headroom on those because the, the compression process off, often adds a little bit of dynamics to the peaks. So the same rules apply. You know, you don't really master for an end product. What you try to do is make it sound as good as you can at the highest resolution and then you go downhill from there. At least you're starting up at the top of the hill. <laughs> what are people mastering for these days? What, what formats are they really, that you find that they're aiming at? Well, often people are putting so singles straight up onto SoundCloud, uh, which can be uncompressed, which is kind of nice. You can actually have natural, uh, you know, 1644-bit uh, files. Uh, People are also selling things through FLAC, and the nice thing about FLAC is that you can start with a 24-bit file. I mean, you can actually go up to uh, 192 kilohertz sampling rate. So FLAC, uh, if you've got a good decompression environment, you can actually listen to very high-resolution audio. But I'm not having that very often, and I'm almost getting no requests for surround, which is odd, because that was going to be the format of the future, wasn't it? Yeah. One of those so what do, you think, what do you think happened? I don't know. I have a few products on surround myself, and 
I, I've discovered that it's very difficult to find formats to distribute the music if it's not a video. So if it's not a DVD or Blu-ray, it's almost never going to be listened to in surround. And currently, people are rarely even listening on those disc formats because they're downloading their stuff from the web now more and more, Apple TV and um, such as that. So I don't know many people that are getting their surround mixes off of those downloaded movies. It's become a problem of convenience and of format. Nobody ever settled on one format like we had with a CD or with a record, with an LP. And without one solid format, everybody got confused. A lot of people have home theaters, but they only watch movies there and they don't even have them set up right. So the idea of having music only surround without a picture never had traction. Uh, you pretty much have to make some kind of a video, and if you want people to hear the music and surround, have it along with that image. But then the audio is still going to be compressed. I haven't seen any use of uncompressed surround formats, and that's a shame because Blu-ray can do that. Blu-ray is capable of a 7.2 uncompressed audio. I don't see anybody using it for that, or 7.1, I think I might be mistaken there. Now, is that something you're going to do, or are you going to move to back to a two-channel or a 2.1? I'm using, most, most of my mixes are in stereo. Um, all of my mastering work is in stereo, except one thing I did for Marcus Reuter, which uh, I think he's releasing right now, uh, called Todd Morton 513. And it's a heavy, experimental, uh, uh, classical piece, a continuous one-hour piece that I mixed and mastered for him. But it's, it's uh, you know, as, as Laurie Anderson once sung, now let's sit back in that straight back chair and get ready for some difficult music. You know? <laughs> let's sit upright, that was it. <laughs> so a uh, uh, little bit of surround work, but not much. I've done a few mixes of uh, trailers for, for film companies. Voodoo had me mix their trailer for their high def um, Voodoo box format. But, uh, but yeah, I, sp I spent a lot of money putting nice Dunlavy surround speakers in my studio, and they only get used about once a year. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. <laughs> um, now, for your own music now, what you're working on, this new synthesizer project with the, the bass and the guitars, will you think about doing that in surround, do you think? Or will you well, keep you it know, to a flatter medium? I keep uh, all the, the, the stems and stuff in the files open so that I can mix them in surround. And my last album, Elong, I had the thought that I would put it in surround but like I said, I really haven't had a demand or an interest. Um, I was turned on to one website, which I've forgotten the name of right now, which is doing some uh, surround download high def formats. And I have to investigate that and see if maybe there is a download music format that I could mix Elong in. And it would sound really good in surround. And then I've also got most of uh, my album Electric Ladder mixed in surround. So I could do that. Um, my, my DVD, Atlas Day, which is with graphics, like motion graphics, a guy named Dan Coleman, Col Colvin, sorry, it's loud here and I'm trying to speak loudly. Um, it has a lot of, it's 90 minutes of my music and surround and it's without any uh, talking or anything. So that was a great way to get a, a big surround album out. I essentially was thinking of it, of it as a surround mix of 90 minutes of my music. Um, I'll try it, you know, I, I'll keep it open so that it's possible.